Light illuminates these objects from behind, and then this light bounces off the mirrored lens. The objects will now appear to have the form of the lens, even though this is not their actual shape. This can be seen by Tyndall's example. He has prepared a small piece of fishing line that is backlit by a green light. However, when the line is passed in front of the camera, it doesn't look like fishing line. It takes the form of a circle with a hole in the center. Sunlight was coming across and hitting ice crystals and, and backlighting them and causing them to illuminate. Any shape that's around the lens of a camera or around the optical path, will, it will impinge on those circles of confusion. But even if the object's shape can be explained, why do they appear to pass behind the tether and circle it? John has set up a mock tether inside a three-dimensional environment and will show how this optical illusion occurs. You see how overexposed the tether is at this point? Mm -hmm. Even though this is in the foreground, it gives the illusion that it's passing behind. The image on STS-75's camera is overexposed, meaning that objects appear brighter than they actually are. This gives the illusion that they are behind the tether when they are actually in front. So you've mimicked a UFO? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think John Tyndall did a good job demonstrating a number of potential optical aberration effects that you might see in the conditions of, of taking photographic or videographic uh, imagery through the space shuttle windows. The team successfully recreated some images from the STS footage, but others still remain unexplained. The only source, besides NASA, left to offer any further information.